What's up everyone, this is Top Ramen Man, back again with a brand new Clash Royale video. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Sunday today. Uh, today I have some exciting news, I'm actually gonna do the drawing in this video and announce the winner for today. Uh, but before I do so, I still want to recap on the video I did last night on the deck that we are currently using. And, and when I say we, I'm actually referring to uh, my clan leader Stanisi and I. Um, he's also my real life friend that I've known for over 20 years. Uh, but if you can take a look in the screen here, it's a still the 3 Musketeer Battering Ram deck. You have the Miner to act as a tank to push both lanes. And of course then you have the E-Wiz, which is perfect for defense. And um, you have the Goblin Gang and the Skeletons to deal with the nasty uh, E-Barbs as well as the P.E.K.K.A.s, me P.E.K.K.A.s, large units. Um, he, Stanisi, if you take a look at his player profile, he actually finished last season uh, at the Master League 2 uh, rank, same as I. But he finished a little bit higher, he has the highest trophy count of 5479. He's won 120,000 cards in Grand Challenges. And currently he's, uh, let me see here, uh, highest in this, this season is about 4,975. He ended last best season best at 5,336. Um, and we are both ba basically the same kind of player, we play the same kind of decks. Uh, I ended at 5,331, 5 trophies below him, my personal best is at 5,365. And uh, so he's the one that actually shared this deck with me, um, but he made some tweaks. Uh, you may see the ice... Uh, you know, like I said, um, there might be a Mega Minion or a Knight in the place of the E-Wiz. You may see an Ice Spirit in the place of a Skeleton. And, yeah. So, let's go ahead and I'm gonna, instead of me playing live, I'm just going to share the replay. I want to actually feature him. So, thanks, Stan, for these replays. And uh, props to you. And go, um, you know, no guts, no glory. Our clan's moving up in the top 200, I believe, in local at the moment. Let's check before I jump to battle. Let's see, where are we at? Our highest we placed was uh, top 179, I believe. Alright, we're at 197, but uh, we're moving on up. We still have uh, you know, a lot of members. Some of them are low trophy count, but uh, they're friends in real life. So we're trying to get them up to par. Alright, so without further ado, I'm going to jump into some replays he shared. This one he actually shared is against a golem deck. And uh, what I'm going to do is push watch. Alright, and I'm just going to commentate on his moves and maybe what I would do differently, and, uh, but he still uh, won, so, you know. Okay, so, yeah, I would have definitely cycled skeletons there, and then right here he still doesn't have a pump in sight, so I would have dropped the three musketeer as well, to put pressure on both lanes here. Now, here's the choice of him wanting to back up the left side or the right side, I would actually battering ram the right side, but let's see what he would do here. Yep, he does. And then he's gonna prepare his log to see if there's any Skarmies. No Skarmies. Okay. So right here I'm gonna use the Goblin Gang for defense uh, in the middle. Nope. Instead he actually goes with the Miner on the left to try to back up that one must that survived and then he Goblin Gangs. Which is pretty good. He still was able to do some chip damage with that Miner there. And he actually managed to do wow, more than half damage on the right tower there. For, unfortunately, because the E-Barb slipped through, he actually lost about 75% of his, uh, his tower health there. So I think the safer play would definitely play the Goblin Gang in the center. And then that way the e bars would get distracted there. <clears throat> since he wasn't able to save that uh, Musketeer anyways. Okay, so definitely we're going to pump up here. Uh, knowing that deck already, yes, I would definitely post the, put the pump on the bottom left, not in the center. Most likely when he plays the E-Barb and Mega Minion, you don't think he's going to have a minor, most likely a Golem deck. Especially after that person plays a pump too. So if he places in the center, that means he's going to get, um, you know, um, what do you call it? It's vulnerable for uh, a Fireball to the weak tower, or a Poison to the weak tower, and the pump. So he splits the must two to the right and one to the left. The other player plays the Golem, so he puts a lot of pressure on the right. I would definitely do the same. Battering him to the right, and there's the e-barbs again. Uh, this time he's gonna okay. He took out the tower, and he has one e-barb. So yes, I definitely would have put the goblin gang again in the center, draw the e-barb to the left, and also play defense for the golem. Uh, I would use the e-wiz here, and yes, he does use the e-wiz. And right here, okay. So he minored the tower, which is really good because there is no other play, and he could just he just wants to do chip damage. And since the counter push was gonna form after they kill off that e uh that was a good play. So definitely Goblin Gang again, okay. 
skeletons here. Oh no, he didn't play the skeletons. Alright, so I would play skeletons there and then drop a quick pocket musket on the other side. Instead, he uh, played a pocket. Okay, musket on the bottom left. I guess actually that's a really good move there uh, because he does have an E Wiz. So if you drop a pocket musketeer and they react with an E Wiz, they're all gonna get shocked and retarget to the E Wiz and then it's gonna die for a 9 for 40 elixir trade. So he played it safe since he already took out on the tower and uh, that was actually a really good play because, uh, you know, basically once you take a tower, all you wanna do is play defense and guarantee you to win. He only has 10 seconds left now. And so right here he's got to save the tower on the left, oh, on the right. Instead, he, now he plays the pocket E Wiz. Uh, almost took out that tower, but didn't matter. See, the, he played the pocket uh, musketeer that that time, and the, he did the player did defend him with E Wiz. Uh, but then, unfortunately, the E Wiz just got you know destroyed, and he was still able to take out that tower. So good play by you there, Stan. You know, so this tells you that you know everybody plays the deck a little different. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is just give you advice on how the way of thinking is, and there's always pros and cons for both ways. But it doesn't matter. You're gonna this, this deck is really good, and you can still win with it. Uh, next, let's see his 11th win. Okay, here. Here's an interesting deck that we want to share. It's another meta deck. This one is against Bowler Poison. Uh, Bowler Poison, Baby Dragon, and e -Wiz. So it was the one of the meta decks that I would use to get to 12, except that this one has a variation. It actually has a Dark Goblin. Alright, so yep, he cycled the skeletons out. I would do the same. Right here, I would split the Goblin game. Okay, instead he goes with the Miner. Uh, and the Goblin again push. So that's a little bit risky there because you can invest uh, 6 to push uh, and then it's going to form a counter push here. He's going to use the E-Wiz to shock, which he does. Now he has to pump inside, so all he needs to do worry about is that bowler and hopefully they don't back up that bowler with anything and he's going to drop the pump and I will do the same too. Okay, the bowler only gets 2 rope balls off. And then he throws a Dark Goblin. I definitely pump up here and probably use a okay so he's gonna just take the damage and wait for the three musketeer push right here so which is good uh oh so that per person plays a baby dragon and the skill um skill, sorry graveyard so okay interesting there he had to cycle there so he uses the miner to, as a tank in defense and he cycled to his goblin gang to push and actually the miner works out because now it's tanking for two goblins and the goblin battering ram wow that's actually a really good play there um, you know, I would have done something different there. It was I was kind of lost and confused, but um, I would actually probably send the miner out towards the, the building to get some chip damage, and then got my goblin gang. But um, this just this actually worked out a lot better. And now, even though he lost a tower, he has a pump that's almost full health, and the elder tower is almost gone. So that's basically two logs, and it'll be dead. Okay, so he dropped the e-wiz just to cycle. He wanted to get to. Okay, now it's his miner. So he drops a miner there, and th that player caught his miner, so, and that gives him the last play. So, miner, you always have to keep in mind. Once they catch your play, you always want to throw your miner around. And the best way to use the miner is just think of the four uh, corners of that tower. You do upper left, bottom left, bottom right, or up right. Those are usually the best places to put, so um, it's harder for them to, um, you know, catch it. If you do middle, bottom, middle left, middle right, or middle top, they usually can catch it because when they post it, they could post uh, post their unit on either side of it and then they will be able to touch it. Alright, so the left musketeer was able to make it. Uh, he played his miner to distract the bowler. It's perfect because now the bowler is hitting the miner and the two barbarians are just knocking down that uh, bowler. So that's really nice um, miner right there. Right here, he doesn't do the pocket musketeer because the bowler is still alive. He doesn't want to get the, the, the have his musketeer get chipped away. Alright. He gets poison, he throws a battering ram. Oh, the poison and tornado combo is definitely a great way to shut down the uh, uh, battering ram and musketeer push. But uh, he has a good elixir lead here with the um, pumps. He has two pumps down. That guy's gonna play a bowler, okay, a bowler and graveyard uh, aggressive move because time's running out. He wants to try to take it out. Unfortunately, that because that they did, he didn't have his uh, poison in cycle. Um, Stan knew to place a goblin army. Uh, goblin army is really a goblin gang, and it's really smart. And then now he drops the pocket musketeer. But you see here, he drops the pocket musketeer, and it gets stopped really easy by the e So once you know the opponent's playing an e wiz you want to make sure if you do it that they, they don't have that e wiz in cycle. But he was still able to do some damage there, and also force that player to waste his poison again. That guy and had to end up using poison, and then the e wiz to get to it. Log, alright, so definitely would log that goblin, um, dark goblin there. 
and I'm not gonna I wouldn't do that yes I wouldn't do the pocket musketeer here so he definitely played this smart again and every time he does that he did it up a little higher so that that person that cannot poison the tower and the musketeer to allow them to get to chip damage because once you're below a thousand they're gonna do aggressive graveyard on you and then you're gonna lose your tower so very smart play there okay so he uses goblin gank behind the e stops it and then he's gonna go ahead and do the musketeer with now he forms a nice counter push he has an e whiz okay he has a miner going he has a musketeer because eventually you keep repeating this you're gonna have a lot of the elixir pumps that he had it's gonna build up oh he dropped a battering ram but the battering ram actually went left so it doesn't have two towers hitting it it's gonna hit yes it does hit it oh and the lock musketeer locks in it's gonna get a couple shots oh the e was shocked it a little bit oh pocket musketeer this is gonna be rust um very risky here Oh, so close! Wow, he uses a miner, a miner again, but the player caught his miner once again. So really good play by the opponent, by the Zeko. He's gonna drop a battering ram. He's gonna log out the bowler. He's gonna have to use goblin game for defense. All right, skeleton for defense. Nice. Oh, he doesn't even care for defense. He's gonna go miner battering ram. He catches. Oh. So they, he, the player caught his miner with the Dark Goblin, but the Dark Goblin is not as tanky as the Knight. So the miner and the two barbs making his way there was able to take it out. Wow, that was a close match. Very exciting. So good play, Sam. And his final win here, check this one out, is against the uh, the version of the Goblin Barrel uh, Hog deck. That It's a spell bait deck. And actually clashed it with Ash featured this video recently. If you check out his channel, it's probably he posted like two days ago. And it's the title is... Um, this de that deck won uh, 20, uh, 20, 12, 20 straight 12 wins in grand so and this deck right here that we're using is uh, he was able to beat it so let's check that replay out here and then we'll finally get to our drawing I'll announce the winner I'm so excited for that as well all right let's see cycles goblin gang yes I would definitely do that too and that person also cycles Goblin Gang. Uh, I would use my miner, so I'm gonna use some. Yeah, he goes left. Uh, doesn't matter which uh, tower, honestly, but he went with the side with less commotion. Okay, so yeah, the, that guy played his hog barrel combo. Uh, definitely, I would have used the E Wiz on a hog and logged the barrel, and so he did that. And now that he's gonna get his pump down, and because that person wasted poison, he knew that um, it was safe for him to play his pump because um, he has to use four more cards to get back to his poison. So that guy's kind of behind there now, and all he did was take 300 damage in, uh, in HP. I'm oh, sorry, two 300 HP in damage. Okay. So now he starts with the uh, three musketeer push in the back. He splits one to the right, two to the left. Um, okay, this is gonna be here. I would goblin gang the right. Uh, he used skeletons instead. Okay, so he's actually saving his conservative uh, conservative elixir. Uh, he actually went with the um, miner on the left to back up the two healthy musketeers because he knew that one one elixir cost for the skeleton can defend since he has a musketeer sneaking up on the right side to shoot off the hog and the electric rays. So he kind of trade off a good amount of damage there but he said uh, he was able to cycle to another pump. The opponent actually did a really good move there. He actually poisoned the uh, both pumps and the king tower because uh, Stan's tower on the right is at 246 so he figures that he could take it out so the king tower is going to awake anyways. So that was a little bit worth it for him on that poison. He got some value out of that. And right here, I wouldn't have done uh, Musketeer 2 to the right and 1 to the left. I would do 2 to the left and 1 to the right because that will leave him um, uh, vulnerable for any other spell. But I think what happened was Stan did read that that was his only spell, the poison. It was safe for him to do so. So, very good play there, Stan. Alright. Okay, the Musketeer locked down on both sides. He was able to sneak the Miner in to tank for the, the low HP Musketeer on the right. Wow, that was, that was very pro there. And now he splits two to the left and one to the right because the pump uh, that he had there previously is gone and then he placed it higher up too on the top so that it wouldn't have to walk by the lo lower area. So now Stan just has to play defense. He's gonna log. Yes, he does log. He already has a musketeer lock up at the top right over there. And it looks like M. Gutis is gonna have a good night and lose this battle here. Yeah. So definitely a 
high level play match here um, it was hard for me to keep up with everything that's going on because there's two lane that's pushing uh, but feel free to watch the replays over and over again in this video and um, let's get to our drawing so well played Stan congrats on 12 wins with this deck uh, I was gonna post a video too if I got there but since you did it I definitely want to just share with uh, all our viewers how good the deck can be alright so let's go ahead and do our drawing so our drawing I actually have everyone's name that actually commented and posted in a little blue hat right here and it's all shuffled up and it's all folded up okay so right now drum roll I don't have drums or anything alright anyways I'm gonna pick one without looking and alright who would the lucky winner be here and open this up all right so congratulations to Muhammad Altaf who is an Android player and I think this person is from the Philippines so um, you know it's crazy how like uh, everyone from around the world is watching it that people from Brazil the Philippines anywhere in the East Coast or West Coast of the United States and you know I really thank you guys for uh, as I said subscribing and always watching my videos and content and leaving me any kind of uh, comments or suggestions so I will be contacting you Mohammed and uh, uh, finding out what your contact information is and that way I can email you uh, a gift card for $20 okay thank you guys for watching until next time um, I will definitely come up with another giveaway once I reach uh, the, my next goal would be a thousand views alright so this is Top Ramen signing out Peace.